Swadika, good afternoon, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hani Chola Pansan Rula. It gives me great delight to welcome you to the inaugural ceremony of Thailand Mice Virtual Expo, hosted by Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau, or TSEP, under the auspices of the Royal Thai Government. As stakeholders in the critical global mice industry, we have been facing unique challenges that have impacted the sector over the past year as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the accompanying difficulties. Business has decimated on every level in every corner of the world, but yet businesses will have to survive and carry on despite the current setbacks, the current challenges that we face. So I believe that it's time for all of us to strive meaningfully in this new course through the challenges in the so-called new normal. And that's why we are here organizing Thailand Mice Virtual Expo, which is done under the concept of the river of the new era. Why river? That's because Thailand, over the many centuries, trade and culture have been centered in this mighty river of life, the Chao Phraya River. So we actually must now develop this river into economic collaboration, new uh, cooperation, and of course, a passage for people to come together. The aim of this function is to reinforce the potential of Thailand's mice industry and also to transform the organizing of events so travel can be done with the mere touch of a button. And through a virtual event platform as such, I believe that it will be an important bridge in this new era to not only link foreign businesses, but also to transport Thai entrepreneurs across the globe. And of course, you're here with us at the virtual event in Bangkok. So thank you very much from jo for joining us from wherever you are. To start, to begin, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great delight to introduce you to our guest of honor, Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, who's joining us, His Excellency, Mr. Anutin Chai Mirakun, who will now deliver the words of welcome. Your Excellency, please. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Royal Thai Government, which oversees the mission of Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau in driving mites industry. I would like to welcome you all to Thailand Mites Virtual Expo. While the world has been faced with COVID-19 pandemic, Thailand has recognized by the World Health Organization and international community for its performance in curbing the disease. Recently, the Lowy Institute has ranked Thailand the world's number four in handling the pandemic of all 98 surveyed countries. The ranking for Thailand is a testament to the readiness and strength of the country's public health system. It also represents collaboration of all sectors in their strict compliance to public health measures and protocols. Such performance of Thailand has resulted in international confidence in our country's full readiness to serve as a medical and wellness hub. Whatever the situation, Thai people in all sectors, including those involved in mice industry, have dedicated themselves to combating the crisis. Every sector makes adaptation in order to be able to continue their business and mission. They adopt new normal lifestyle to run their enterprises, especially health and hygiene measures. And what is playing a prominent role in all industries around the world is the employment of technology in their operation. One key example in this connection is the organization of Thailand Mike's Virtual Expo. Kindly let me ask you to have confidence in Thai government. We will take every measure to promote mice industry and to enable it to run their business on a sustainable basis. We will need full support to drive the economy of all sectors so that they can make international connection. We will dedicate ourselves to making preparation on our fronts for mice industry so that they are ready to safely welcome business travelers from all over the world again when the harsh situation subsides. Thank you.
Thank you very much to the Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, His Excellency Mr. Anuthin Chan Murakun. And I believe that many of our audience must appreciate to gain such confidence from the top level of the Thai government firsthand. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as the driving force and host of Thailand Mice Virtual Expo, we would also appreciate hearing from the top management from Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau. Now, the Chairman of the Board of TCEP, Dr. Achaka Sibunryang, has her welcome message for all of you. Mr. Anutin Chan Virakun, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Public Health, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, both in Thailand and from across the world, good afternoon. On behalf of Chairman of the Board of Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau, or TCEP, I would like to cordially invite all of you to Thailand Mice Virtual Expo. It is the country's first fully virtual event organized to promote Thailand's mice industry between the 24th and the 25th of February. We intend to create the opportunities for all of you to have virtual experience of participation in the event in Thailand, where technology is maximized for this particular platform. Despite no face-to-face -face meetings in Thailand, we can hold events for business negotiation, Thailand situation update, and presentation of Thai cultural workshops for virtual participation. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted mice industry worldwide, including Thailand, where mice has been key revenue generator. However, Thailand has scored highly in dealing with the infection. Likewise, Thai mice industry itself needs to take every step to be future-proof. Despite international travel restrictions, TCEP has been working with mice and event associations in the country in developing mice venue hygiene guidelines for venues and event organizers so that they can hold events in accordance with safety and hygiene measures established by the Ministry of Public Health. Around 1,700 Thai mice operators across the country have been supported by TCEP in executing mice venue hygiene guidelines in organizing events. These mice operators are members of four asso associations namely Thailand Convention and Incentive Association or TICA, Thai Exhibition Association or TAA, Business of Creative and Event Management or EMA, and Thai Hotels Association or THA. The strict practice of the guidelines is prevalent among Thai mice personnel. They wear face masks while hand washing stations are equipped at venues. One meter social distance for sitting and standing point is set up and no less than four square meters space is arranged for meetings, trainings, seminars, exhibitions, and trade fairs. Furthermore, TCEP has initiative to support mice entrepreneurs to utilize innovation and technology in organizing online and hybrid events. This initiative is aimed to enable the continuation of mice business in a safe mode. So far, TCEP has supported around 200 such online events. For Thailand situation update, the recent U.S. News and World Report has ranked Thailand number one as the world's best destination for starting business of all 17, 73 countries around the world. Bloomberg News also put Thailand among 17 countries as the first ranked emerging market with best economic prospect in 2021. I am confident that my Thai mice industry is now ready to drive business growth. Thailand is among the destination best prepared to welcome back overseas travelers when travel safety is ensured and the sky is reopened for international flights. In this connection, Thailand Mice Virtual Expo will be the testament to our capability in driving forward international mice, connecting mice players, and attracting participation from all corners of the world. All can be achieved despite travel restrictions by using technology to organize virtual platform. I believe that Thailand Mice Virtual Expo will deliver an experience for all of you to realize the potential of using technology in organizing new normal events that will be not less memorable than the physical meetings. Thank you for your attention. 
Thank you to the chairman of the board, TCEP, Dr. Ataka Sibunruang. Thank you for the message, which I believe will help boost confidence amongst international mice markets to continue to invest in Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, up next, I'd like to introduce you to another vital person who has been instrumental leading the team in putting the event Thailand Mice Virtual Expo together. The president of Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau, Mr. Tirut Isarangku Nawithiya. Nobody understands the current situation of the mice sector better than him, Mr. Miceman Thailand. So I'd now like to introduce you to Kun Tirut, please. สวัสดีครับ Mr. Anutin Chan Virgun, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Public Health of Thailand. Dr. Achaka Sibunruang, the Chairman of the Board of TSET, or the Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau. Uh, friends from over the world, also ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and I'm pleased to tell you that today's expo is is uh, bringing you a perfect combination of business and knowledge and um, Thai culture experiences. And I hope that you have a good time with us via our virtual platform today. Today's event is a result of close collaboration between TSEP, MICE partners, and some industrial enterprises. The goal is to enable you to engage the MICE experiences of all forms, which are virtually business negotiation with Thai mice operators, attending webinars to get update on new development of Thailand's various strategic industries, and also participate in our Thai culture online workshops. The Thai exhibitors are now stationed to welcome you all from all over the world. They consist of hotels, venues, DMCs or destination management companies, organizers, planners, including tech and startup companies. For the online panel discussion and webinars, we are so honored by the presence of high profile leaders and experts in each particular industry. They will keep you informed the progress of Thailand's high potential industries, including digital technology, health and wellness, logistics, sustainability, agriculture, and, and hospitality. These are the industrial sectors seen as a window of Thailand's future development. But ladies and gentlemen, apart from business talk, and industry update. We also have fun. We also have something for you to enjoy. Today's Thailand Mice Virtual Expo brings some of art and cultural activities to freshen you up. We have live streaming workshops featuring four activities for everyone to join in, in the real time. The first is Thai food that pre presents you Thai menu, which every one of you all over the world that you, you are with us now can do by using of your own ingredients back at home, wherever you are. The second is Thai Fest that tells you the secret of Thai puppet painting and the making of traditional floral decoration. The third theme is Thai destination, which is which will introduce you the reimagination of four regional destinations of Thailand, including the traditional Thai massage. The last one, the final one, is something you, that can make you sweat. It's a Thai fight or Thai boxing. We have our world champion boxer, who will give you the best of Thai boxing instruction and also special techniques. So let's see that. These entertaining activities have been prepared for you all because we value your time. Besides, there are prices up for grabs and they will be delivered from Thailand to your doorstep. 
no matter where you live around the world. I, let, I make sure you will get that. Ladies and gentlemen, Thailand Mice Virtual Expo is held under the theme of the River of New Era to reflect Thailand's main lifeline, our Chao Phaya River, which seems and will keep flowing for thousand years. It reminds us the need to keep moving forward and join hands together to overcome all kinds of hardship that we face. And I know it's what we are all doing and finding way to further strengthen it. Please enjoy Thailand Mice Virtual Expo and see you soon in Thailand when the day comes. I wish to see you all. Today we see each other in virtual um, uh, technological that we have now, but we sure that we will meet again in Thailand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Kunji Rut Isurangu Nautia, President of TSEP, for updating us on the current MICE situation, the objectives behind organizing Thailand MICE Virtual Expo, and the activities to look forward to in the coming two days. It will definitely play an important part for the industry here. And the moment that we have been waiting for has now arrived, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. That is the official opening of Thailand MICE Virtual Expo. We will mark the occasion with a ceremony highlighting the expo's theme, that is the river of the new era. The meandering river you see before you now will turn into droplets of water to signify the movement of cooperation. We begin together today to represent the collaboration of the mice industry. I'd like to have Kunti Rut to declare the expo open by touching the droplets of water. So we'll do the countdown now, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, and one. opening of Thailand Mice Virtual Expo. I'd now like to invite the management team of TSEP and all the Thailand team partners to please kindly come up on the stage to welcome all of you and we also will be taking pictures right here at the event which seamlessly turns from the offline to online world in the new normal era and of course we create invaluable opportunities for the mice industry to create more meaningful business engagement to discover fresh uh, insights knowledge and innovation of business development in thailand and especially to experience a new sense of cultural dynamism for business events as together we navigate the river of the new era so as we are still marking this moment on camera i'd like to tell you about the activities that will be coming up in the next two days uh, we have webinars and panel discussions encompassing eight key topics on trends and new development of strategic industries of Thailand, such as digital technology, health, wellness, logistics, sustainability, Thai food industry, and hospitality as well. We have live streaming workshops under four main topics, including Thai food, Thai fest, Thai fight, and Thai destination to showcase the cultural excellence of Thailand in serving future business events. So I'd now like to take this opportunity to thank TSEB management team and also the partners for joining us in today's official opening of Thailand Mice Virtual Expo. Thank you so much to all of you for coming. This will certainly help drive the mice sector here in the country and bring opportunities to you as well. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, in the next two days we will have a number of uh, topics to be discussed in a webinar series and the first of which will begin in just a few uh, minutes from now. It's on the topic of trends in the events industry. And our guest today will be representatives of Thailand International Events and Festivals Trade Association, or TIFA, as well as leading figures in the festivals and events organizing industry. So we will be back in a short while. Don't go away, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you.
Hello again. Welcome back to Thailand Mice Virtual Expo and the first in a series of uh, webinar in the next two days. And the first topic for today is trends in the events industry. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has turned the world upside down in 2020. It has reshaped the way we live, the way we do businesses, and the events industry has been affected as well. So we saw a lot of concerns when it comes to safety, a rise in uh, virtual and hybrid events, and the more use of technology to help people stay connected and to stay engaged. But what is the future? hold what is the uh, trends to watch out for in the coming years so joining us today we have experts uh, industry leaders who can give you first-hand knowledge and experience on the mice sector so I'm very pleased to introduce you to our guest Kun Son Chatkainara vice president of Thailand international events and festivals trade association or TIFA and CEO festival owner of the living art company limited Kun Piyaphong Mun Prasad D, Association Director of TIFA and co-founder of Fang Jai Company Limited in charge of educational, governmental and overseas partnership. Kun Pong Siri He Trakun, Association Director of TIFA and Festival Director of Awakening Bangkok. And also, we are very happy to have Mr. Ricky Van Rensburg with us, the co-founder of the Sweated application. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. Let me begin with asking this first question uh, to Kun Ricky, as before we get into the trends and all, we'd like to have a panelist explain to the audience briefly about their businesses. So Ricky, one of the fast growing events business today is the sporting uh, industry, I would say, the sporting events. You have been in the industry for over a decade. You're the co-founder of the Music Run. You've been involved in Spartan Race. And also, you are the co-founder of Sweated Application. That's a global fitness community. So tell us a bit about how how this powerful tool uh, works and how does it help engage people and its place in the industry today? Sure. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's, it's really good to be here. Um, yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, I've been in the, in the fitness and sporting event industry for, for a very long time um, in this part of the world. And uh, we noticed a, a couple of challenges and a couple of problems that we really wanted to solve. And, um, and so um, with Sweatit, um, we wanted to create a, uh, a platform that really um, targeted two main, main issues for event organizers. Uh, first and foremost, um, you know, around community and sponsorship engagement, um, and then secondly, around creating additional revenue streams uh, for these event organizers, especially going into the, the COVID period. Um, and so we've created a, a really powerful, amazing platform. Um, it's really simple. The way it works is uh, any event organizer can go ahead and, and set up their own uh, their own profile, their own event within the within the app. Um, it's obviously predominantly focused around sports and, and health and, and wellness. Um, and any basically any um, fitness tracking device that you can use, you can plug into our app, um, and your participants can go ahead and, and do their activity, whether it's meditation or yoga, or tai chi, or going for a run. And they can then plug that into, into our app, and they earn credits for that, which they can compete on various leaderboards. Um, and most importantly, they can use those credits to spend uh, on, on rewards and gifts from your sponsors. So create some really nice, meaningful, meaningful engagement there. So uh, yeah, just a really fun, fun all-round app for uh, the sports and, and health and fitness events. So you sweat and you get credits. That's exactly how it works. So the name is essentially <laughs> Sweat It, which is sweat and credit mixed. Um, and that's exactly, that's exactly it. We really want to try, you know, obviously, uh, in, the, in the current climate, uh, health and wellness is, a, is an incredibly uh, important thing. It's on top of everybody's mind at the moment um, and, and should be forever. And so um, a lot of what we're trying to do is really drive uh, motivation and really encourage people to get out, get fit, and get healthy. And we feel that a lot of the brands and the events and, and uh, sponsors out there have the ability to help motivate that mm -hmm. and help drive that motivation um, and help their participants get fit and healthy in a fun way while engaging with their, uh, with their brands. It's a great reason to sweat yeah. for them. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right. Now, our next question uh, for Kun Pong Siri. As mentioned earlier, you are the Association Director of TIFA and Festival Director of Awakening Bangkok. That's the annual Festival of Light, and it's hosted in Zeren Grung, uh, the so-called creative district here in the city. So uh, tell us a bit about this festival, and uh, also explain to us a bit more, why is Zeren Grung the creative district? Right. Uh, well, so um, first of all, though, um, why Bangkok first? Yeah. Well, uh, Bang Bangkok to, to me is the, um, 
well, we have one of the most charming city in, in the world, and, and especially Riverside, and also the, the old part of, of the city that, uh, that's very charm. But however, though, some, some, some part of the city, I would say, like, have been abandoned. Some part of the building has, has been uh, abandoned and lost interest in um, until you get a light shining to them, right? And, 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 and you can see the charming um, back. Um, so, Awakening Bangkok is one of the uh, one kind of festival that we, we would call um, an urban lighting festival, where we put lighting installation, lighting, uh, light, light arts into uh, part of, into part of the neighborhoods, like into um, galleries, into creative space, and, and every interesting places in, in the neighborhood. Well, as you can see on the, on the slide here, um, well, the light. Um, lighting installation would, would become like this. Uh, uh, well, partially outdoor event, 10 days free at 10 fres uh, festival. We are aiming to well, create the, the, the well, I would, say, I would call like nighttime economy into the, into the, 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 the neighborhood. And also, uh, in, in the long run, we would expect, uh, as in the other cities that had an, a big urban lighting festival as well, to have. Um, Increase and inbound travelers to, to the city. Well, uh, well, last year, uh, since it's free uh, attend festival for ten days, we have a total number of around one twenty thousand people attended uh, events. Well, and, and very interesting and fluctuated a number of people then because like well, it's an outdoor event, it's a city event. Uh, uh, everything that that hitting the city will affect our event as well. So PM two point five um, last year and COVID uh, hit us uh, uh, a bit hard, but overall COVID. Coming uh, the second part of the COVID is especially the last day of our uh, of our event. So so well, unlucky for the city, but well, we, we just uh, have that for for one day. Well, it's a very um, photogenic event. Though, so if if you want to uh, know more about uh, what the event is, well, um, uh, follow the hashtag on, on Instagram Awakening Bangkok or Awakening Bangkok 2012 uh, 2020. Well, um, you can see um, a bit about that. Well. Um, we, uh, well, for, to summary though, uh, last year we're doing about 39 lighting spots with uh, 20 locations and uh, there's 11 Esserong and 16 bar around the neighborhood um, joining us um, for, for celebrating, the, celebrating the, the festival. So yeah, that would be um, a, a very rough summary of the, of the festival. Mm -hmm. And the theme last year was kind of interesting because you highlighted the current crisis and of course uh, showing people to hope for a better future right, through right. these creative expressions. Right, right. Well, well oh, wow, you, you, you do your homework then. Uh, well, that's, uh, well, the, the, the theme of the festival last year um, is about, well, reimagine. Because, like, we, we, we already, uh, well, closed down the city for, for almost, like, uh, four or five months. Um, so, so the theme is about, like, re, re, reopen and reimagine the, how would we redefine the neighborhood and moving forward to the future. So Jeroen Prung now has its own identity, it became a creative district. Well, yes, currently. Well, well, not only our festival, though. Well, we, we, are, we are the only lighting festival, but there's also um, Bangkok Design Week, which is oh. organized uh, by, okay. by uh, CEA in, in the um, neighborhood area as well. Um, and I think there will be a lot of city festival to come. Mm -hmm. Interesting in, in indeed. Our next question uh, for Kun Pia Pong. We'll take a look at another festival that is the Bangkok Music City organized by Fang Jai, which is a music community platform solutions based company. Uh, it's a base, uh, company based in Bangkok, that is. So I believe that it is Thailand's first international music conference and showcase festival. Can you tell us more about Thailand's music scene and how does Fang Jai play in its role in helping create opportunities for the homegrown talents? Okay. But before that, I'd just like to mention that Tom is also my co-founder. Right, and I have to, 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 to mention uh, again that, well, Bangkok Music City is another city uh, festival they're doing in the Jaren Kung neighborhood as well. Well, um, I reckon in Bangkok is lighting, Bangkok Music City about music um, that's spreading um, through, through the neighborhood. Yes. So, so you guys uh, are best friends? <laughs> well, best partners, I could say. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's great. Right, so actually we both are musicians and um, that's why we are so passionate in right. the, the local music scene. So what I do in Fung Jai um, to help with the scene, um, basically we, we actually do a lot. So 
Uh, my background was actually in sustainable uh, development, uh, sustainable, sustainability and climate change, actually. I used to be a consultant in that field, and I, I tried to use the knowledge and skill sets that I had from that old job into my new job in music. Um, I see that the Thai music ecosystem isn't that strong yet compared to a lot of countries. Um, I've interned and worked in the, in the States and I've seen that their independent musicians are more capable of surviving um, more than, than Thai independent musicians. So I thought that there should be some things that could be improved in the ecosystem. So we do work with the community a lot. We have um, a music streaming platform that is self-uploading, so the artists can self-upload their music there. There's a community of, of listeners who are ready to listen to strange kind of music, non-mainstream. So uh, we engage with them via social media like Facebook and, um, and also our events such as um, concerts and festivals. One other festival that we host is called Maharasop Festival, which is an international music festival. We have international artists, but also local artists uh, performing. And um, for other stuff that we do, we also work a lot with the government agencies such as um, CEA, Creative, Creative Economy Agency, NAA, the um, National Innovation Agency, and also TSEB, uh, the host of this event. So we try to work with the government a lot because we believe that um, PPPs or uh, private-public uh, partnerships are key to developing uh, the industry forward. I mean, not just the music industry, but also creative industries, um, film industries, any industry at all. Yeah. So. Uh, we try to develop like programs and we try to get funding from the government. For example, Bangkok Music City is mostly funded by these government agencies. And uh, we are very lucky to be working with people in the government agencies who see the importance of arts and music and creativity. And we hope to get uh, more funding so that uh, we can expand our idea to be somewhat uh, a South by Southwest kind of event. We want to help export Thai music, but not only Thai music. We want to help bring in um, international um, music professionals to come over to Thailand, to come see our artists, and also Southeast Asian artists, and also artists from all over the world who want to connect with our community to come and, and meet with each other at our event. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's Bangkok Music City. Now let's take a look at arts. Yes, we have the uh, festival owner of the Living Art, organizer of art and culture festivals, and I believe that you have created many cultural uh, events, and uh, a number of them are being held in Phuket, one uh -huh. of the uh, hardest hit provinces by the coronavirus crisis. So tell us a bit about your platform. How has the journey been and the challenges facing um, the arts industry since COVID struck? Okay. Actually, you know, art is very difficult to to uh, uh, the showcase for, for Thai people. Luckily, I got uh, support from TSEP about a couple of years, and then um, um, I made decision to to do something in Phuket. And TSEP just we discussed because that TSEP is our strategic partner. Okay, um, could we do something for Phuket? I mean, like last long. Um, then I prepared this kind of work for two years before COVID, you know. Um, we, we have the intention to do like creative city hub for Phuket. Because Phuket itself, they, they are, I mean like the infrastructure or the logistics, they really, you know, like the world destination. But just uh, uh, the thing that Phuket spoil because of the tourism, you know, so they, uh, their activity is not continuously at all. The, the strategy and the vision of us and TSEP, we would like to do something continuously and last long. So I create the Living Art Festival. It's uh, not only art or contemporary art, we focus on the creative and lifestyle as well. And uh, the just we plan uh, to launch this in 2019. You know, um, just we just and now and the COVID just, you know, hit really hard. That you know, people in Phuket they lost job suddenly. You know, not only 
thousand people, I think more than ten thousand people that lost. Uh, luckily, nowadays we we got the technology, you know, and uh, then uh, before the festival, I got an offer from 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 our main venue to have like the physical gallery. It's it's a great showcase, and luckily I got the the partner who is a developer for AR and VR. So the mainly we present the gallery with the, the art piece first. Actually, so for, for VR and, 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 and AR, it is not only just interactive uh, activity, but it's developed to e-commerce. It is the most important, you know. When, so when I launched the, the gallery in August 2019, mm -hmm. people just worry because it during the COVID time. But uh, luckily, we got this uh, uh, technology, so people can access and know about our gallery and our uh, festival. So um, um, I think we lucky that that we have the, the digital technology that we can present, or uh, people can engage, not just physically. This is the thing that we done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what's the current climate like now in uh, in Phuket when it comes to the arts industry? Uh, Luckily, at that time, I uh, uh, work with the community as well. You know, we, 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 we got very good uh, collaboration. I, during the festival, okay, three days, we got the uh, engagement. So, I mean, like people show up, five venues. It is not only at the main venue at uh, Butri Lagoon, but we, we spread around the island. Okay, so uh, uh, it's... it's it's coming, you know, like shaking the island now. That's, you know, people never thought about art and creative in Phuket before. And uh, it's happened like uh, in the old town now. They, they just got the passion from our work and mm -hmm. they create, you know, like every Saturday night that they try to bring people to get together with like style. Yes. I see. So Kun Son Chan has given us an idea about her business and already mm. got into some of the trends that we yes. see in, in the arts world. So this next question, let me throw it over back to Ricky. And when it comes to the sporting events industry, uh, what are the changes you saw or the trends that will be picking up in this festival economy? Sure, yeah. So I think um, obviously an incredibly difficult time for, you know, especially when you're looking at mass participation events and, and things like that, um, where, you know, there's been this massive scramble to try understand what is possible and what we, what we can actually do. Um, and, you know, there's been some, some great, um, great sort of initiatives by, by a lot of the organizers out there going virtual, doing virtual uh, events, um, trying to switch onto that virtual platform. Um, and so I think, um, I think it's been, it's been a, a challenge, but I think a lot of them have done it incredibly well. And I think uh, one of the, the interesting spaces that we're in at the moment is that the technology um, somewhat is catching up to, to what we need in the event industry. And so I, I don't think we've necessarily seen everything that, um, that's going to be kind of possible uh, in terms of a, a trend moving forward. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that a lot of it is just really um, initially has been people just trying to get online and, and create these events in some sort of virtual uh, space uh, in a safe way. Um, and I think the next step now is, is how people are going to uh, engage their participants more. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's maybe where, where the focus needs to kind of move moving forward. So engagement is one of the challenges we hear. Sure. So how do you intend to redefine engagement when it comes to uh, your platform? Sure. Well, yeah, I think that's, that's the, the whole thing, right? I, in, in the past, I'm talking specifically around uh, sporting events now or mass participation events. Um, all the engagement happens on the day. So, you know, a, a huge amount of, of work is done to, to put on these fantastic uh, events and have these race villages and, and you know, these, these big running tracks and, and all that kind of thing. Um, but all that engagement with both with the participants uh, amongst each other, but also that engagement that's happening with the sponsors um, is all happening on that particular day. And so what we've really tried to do from, from our side, and, and we're seeing that in the industry, is 
is how do we create these touch points and these engagement moments uh, outside of just that event day and how do we make them more meaningful? Um, and so our, our belief is really it's around building more community and creating more uh, long-term engagement with your participants, not just this one-off event moment, you know? Um, and I think kind of looking forward into the more hybrid uh, event space that we're gonna be moving into for sure, um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot smaller events, but maybe a lot more of them. Mm -hmm. um, or events may, that were one day may go uh, onto three day or five day events. And so um, the keeping people engaged on a daily basis and whatever is, a, is, um, is going to be the, the trick that people need to get right, I think. And so you know, with our platform, that, that is very much our focus, is how do we engage people every single day? How do we get them engaging with your brands and with your event every single day? Um, you know, one of the things we noticed is at every running event, uh, just running event for example, um, almost every single participant at some point or another picks up their, their phone or taps on their, on their watch and engages with their health and fitness tracker. Mm -hmm. um, and so we saw that as a, as a real big touch point. And so we've really built our app around in, uh, integrating various fitness trackers and that kind of thing so that every single time you go for a run or you do a meditation session or you, uh, you know, use an app for a workout, um, you can then engage with those particular brands and sponsors by being on, on a platform like ours or, or one of the others. So, um, so yeah, that's how we've, how we've done it. Kuntam, what do you see as the trends? Well, I would say, um, well, hi hybrid, as he said. Hybrid well, and micro events as well? Yeah, hi hi hybrid would be, well, I, I, I would say well, hybrid would be one of the trends, but, but I would, I would uh, say at the core, um, uh, stepping back one, 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 one step, um, I, I think I would say it like this. Um, first of all, uh, need to um, need to need to get the core right, and and still having the core idea of the event uh, there. The other format, the other possibility of of doing events can change, can be changed. Like so, if I if I can have my my slide uh, back again on on the on the slide that, that I just 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 um, present though. Um, so, um, uh, for example, um, there, there are uh, events that, um, like, like um, uh, I, I, I know one of the collectible toy events, um, Thailand Comic Con, I, I can say the name. Mm -hmm. um, Thailand Comic Con, uh, uh, um, they are this year, no, last year though, they are doing uh, their events because like, most of the, most of the transaction in festival they are they are selling toys, right? So um, they are doing um, last year. They are doing if, uh, the festival partnering with one of the largest um, um, shopping application uh, in, in Thailand and, and doing it as a as a hundred um, online event. Mm -hmm. And the, the number of, of, of the toys they are selling is is quite high, um, even though they are not doing physical festival. For me, though, um, this is. Uh, the format that I found, well, the core of the event was still the lightning festival, but um, as the, the, the format of, of the festival, uh, it, it's expanding to um, many places in the neighborhood. So every place you can have a, a temperature check, you can have a mask check, mm -hmm. you can have a, 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 an, an alcohol gel for, for washing hands. All the safety every, regulations. Right, on every, every uh, venues means that if you have 20 menus, uh, 20 men menus, you can have um, 20 checkpoint. It is at the same rate as you are going to to, to hospital, like washing hands 20 times when going some, some, somewhere else. Well, that's one format that I found as well. It, I, I think it would be a uh, well, well, good idea for some of the festival that, well, if you are not thinking about gathering people into the same place, what about thinking um, like, uh, get, well, like, like, distributed all those people into different places in the, in, in the neighborhood, well, that would be, would be one possi possibility of doing like um, large people festival um, during the COVID as well. Mm -hmm. Kun Pai, what about the music scene? We hear a lot of trends. We hear um, things like VR, AR, and mixed reality. Can you tell us a bit more about what you think when it comes to these changes and technologies implemented in the music scene? Um, the technologies are available, but um, it's not widespread yet. 
So that's one of the, you know, the barriers to, to reaching that trend. So if the, the VR um, technology, like um, the personal headsets are cheaper and there's more um, available in the market, then of course, yes, the, the, the virtual music events would become even more advanced, more accessible to the majority of the market. Right now, uh, most of the virtual events that we see and also the ones that we organize are are handset kind of yeah. events, meaning right, that right. people would watch the festivals and the performances through their mobile phones. I see. Which is not, you know, the best kind of experience. Mm. But that's it's the easiest way hmm? to enjoy. It's the easiest way though. It's easy, yes. And it's also well, it's there's not many choices when you can't go anywhere because of COVID, right? But the thing is, um, it's only for this particular moment. If COVID goes away, people would want to come out and join uh, you know, physical events again, because that's what people are. We are social animals, and we want to get the real experience. So um, in the past year, I've been attending quite a few um, virtual events, uh, virtual conferences. And one of the things about music conferences is that music people really want that human connection. Mm -hmm. um, in order to do business, we want to become friends with each other first. Mm -hmm. We want to you know, drink with each other first. So from that physical friendship, then it turns into actual business. And um, through virtual, it makes it really hard. I mean, we do have drinking sessions via Zoom but that's not the same, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I can understand. <laughs> yes. So um, we also had like, um, you know, business matchings uh, between uh, music business professionals and artists. I mean, that is a very cost effective kind of way, yes. But um, still, the potential buyers, the talent buyers, they want to see the artist perform live in front of a live audience and them and themselves being in that audience so that they can feel the vibe, feel the energy before they book the artist. So right now, the only thing that they want to do um, is actually to do the, you know, the digital distribution, the publishing part of it, not really the touring part. Um, so, I mean, virtual will definitely be, you know, in the future. Um, we are going to adapt to it and the technology will become better it would be kind of like a second life for all of us, yes. But until that day, we still would crave for, for physical, for sure. May, may I add into this one? Please. Um, well, that, there's a saying that, um, well, well, speaking about device, because like um, the, 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 ma the major reason for, um, well, AR, VR, and XR that's not been um, um, distributed a lot or adopted more because, well, it's because of the device, right? There's a saying that um, the best device that you can have is actually the device that you, can, that you don't have to wear anything, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. so it's currently the, the, the device is very bulky. Like yeah. you have, sure. if you would like to have the, the VR on Google, it, it's, it's bulky and, and you have to have the controller and all those, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would say on that standpoint, we are not even reaching the first step of virtual world yet. Mm -hmm. There is a um, uh, uh, forecasting that the disruption of virtual experience will be around like um, 2030. So, so well, I, I would say like we are about to go into the first step of that. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a start, right? As yeah. Kun Son Chat mentioned, uh, yeah. she was pretty successful in organizing the event last year before the second break outbreak of COVID struck. Yes. And the response was very good. You mentioned earlier 50 million views or engagement. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, from the revenue generated was close to a million baht. Yeah. And that's through the use of virtual reality and um, uh, AR. OK. Actually, it's, it's not really about uh, 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 VR uh, or AR. As uh, I, I quite agree with Kun Biapong and Kun, Kun Tom about, because it needs more development. Mm -hmm. This is just like a showcase about, uh, uh, about the technology. Actually, uh, as Kun Biapong said, at the end, people, you know, they need to get together because people need to socialize. 
this is just people try to survive mm -hmm. from, from, from the current situation. Okay, VR is might suitable for something, but not suitable for the interactive, you know, if for the, the, the entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, useful for, for the museum or for the gallery, you know. But the reality is after that, uh, the, the, the back of the house, I mean like the detail mm -hmm. before, the uh, coming up to... to, the to preparation. The, yeah, the preparation is very, very difficult and, and the cost is still high. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's say if you would like to, to present something to the e-commerce, you need the professional, uh, I mean like photographers and e-commerce, digital technologies, uh, POS system, inventory, mm -hmm. even though you know so for the uh, social planner. So uh, I could say at the moment VR and AR is just the current situation that people try to survive and, and I mean like you know to, to, to make a move at, mm -hmm. the, 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 at the moment. And uh, I could say that uh, for the conference, uh, virtual reality or, or, or the AR is, is, might be good at the present time, you know, because they did not need a lot of interactive. Mm -hmm. But for the entertainment, you know, like music and, 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 and food and, you know, gastronomy, it still need interactive. So we still need physical, you know, so to, to participate and collaborate. Yeah. I see. Um, Can I? Add? Okay, oh, sure. Sorry. Yes, please. I see. I see. All right. Okay. Well, <laughs> I just wanted to to say that, yes, I seem to be saying stuff a little bit negative, right? Um, but I, I probably forgot to mention that it also depends on the expected experience, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, for yeah. example, what's that um, artist again that did the, um, the concert in, in the game? The, the, you mean the virtual? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the rapper. Yeah. Uh, it was Tupac Shuka did the, and, and Snoop Dogg did a, yeah, in the right. VR, the yeah. virtual reality. Uh, the, the, there's um, one doing uh, in-game. In in, um, yeah. uh, yes. Lots Normally of in games. Like in ga the game, you know. I but uh, luckily, I, I just oh, learned no. recently about the gallery. Uh, the things about VR uh, for the gallery, so we don't need the physical venue. We can do like the platform, uh, imaginarium, I, I, we say yeah. imaginarium gallery. Okay, let's say it's a, uh, the product or the, the art piece don't have to come to the gallery. It's still with the artist, but we have to create the system that people can access with the smartphone and, and, and get the information about the, about the I say like the, the subject, and then it can be going to purchasing. This is just, I mean, for the gallery is quite, you know, mm. quite good and uh, no need for warehouse, no need for, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people at the shop. Mm -hmm. But as I said, for the technologies in the back, back of the house, it's a lot of work as well, a lot of preparation. And, and the price, you know, the cost to develop is still quite high if you did not get, uh, I mean, like the, the right partner that's willing to develop together. Mm. It's very costly. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. I think there was one thing I, I wanted to say was, um, I do think the technology is trying to catch up with us. Mm -hmm. I, I think the events industry, you know, we're pretty resilient, we're very creative, um, and, and I think a lot of amazing new ideas are coming mm -hmm. out, and mm -hmm. we need to find a, we need to find a, um, you know, technology needs to catch up with us and be able to offer us what we can at a price we can afford and, and all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And I think that's just going to take a bit of time to happen. Mm -hmm. But what I think is vitally important is that uh, as event organizers, we get on board with the tech side. I think event organizers need to, moving forward, be prepared to have developers are part of their team and, and things like that, so that you are on top of the on top of the game. It's not going to go away. Um, you know, the the virtual world and all of that. We may have hybrid events and that sort of thing, but I think it's it's here to stay. And and the new venue is is a screen, um, and that venue needs to be um, needs to be managed and looked after. And so yeah. I mean, technology should catch up with with um, with the real thing. Yes, mm. but I was thinking of my own experience back in like probably 2005, mm -hmm. um, I was addicted to GTA, yeah. uh, San Andreas. Yeah. So I played it so much that every time I walk or run or move, I was feeling that I was moving the joystick. Yeah. So 
I was thinking, okay, instead of, you know, making it the real, mimic the real thing, it's like if you change um, the function or the experience of the festival into what people are already used to, for example, the in-game um, concert, mm -hmm. then it's that, that's the way they move. That's mm -hmm. the way they interact with their environment. Probably that's also another option. Uh, sure. For virtual events. Yeah. On, on this part, I have to one thing to add, though. Well, well I think, um, well, there are so many ex examples about virtual events currently. Well, well, there are some virtual festivals that are trying to mimic uh, or trying to imitate uh, uh, the, the real experience that, that there is in a physical world. Um, but there is another type of um, experience which I would say um, the focus of uh, the, the future of virtual experience is on that side. Um, the key to develop the virtual experience is actually trying to build something that's not available in the real world, right? That, that's the key, e especially in entertainment uh, business, though. So, um, such as uh, if you're trying to do, um, let's say, like a virtual art gallery, right? You, you, you'll, at, at, I, I would say at one point uh, in time, you will find that um, seeing the, the actual... Um, a uh, painting would, would be better than uh, experience that in, in virtual reality, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were wanted to trying to do an art event in, in virtual reality, why limit it yourself in, in just uh, a, 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 a physical gallery, right? You can, you can do like an, a very um, out of space, immersive kind of art in, in that, right? And I, I would say that's the key to, to doing uh, uh, like a virtual festival, like, like uh, the example that we <laughs> forgot the name of the artist though, well, it, it's in the game Fortnite, yeah. right? Um, it's not a staging kind of music festival anymore. Is it Michael something? No, it was a girl, wasn't it? I, uh, I seem uh, to remember. Uh, 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 <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Yeah. we'll go find out later. Uh, right, right, yeah. right. Well, it, it's in Fortnite. The, the stage uh, of, of music festival is not a staging type of festival anymore. The artist, Came, came down to the, I would say, like the, 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 the playing space by a meteor, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, he's playing using, using that comet as, as a stage. And then uh, at third or fourth song, people is actually um, moving up to the space and listening to, to his concert by moving together with, 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 the, meteor, with, with the comet, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's, it's like, let's say, like, it's like experiencing a music festival in the ring of the Saturn, kind of those, right? So this kind of experience cannot be happen in in physical world, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so I think that's the key, and that's the uh, reason for audience to um, to to have an intention to get into the festival, right? Experiencing something that's not real. Mm, and also for the gallery part, I mean, there's a technology that you can see, you know, the the painting. You, through like a microscope, you can shrink yourself down to see the grains of the, the paper right. and the, you know, the paint pigments. So if you get a different experience, different from the real world, maybe that's something attractive as well and you can do it through the technologies that are available. Mm -hmm. So while we're still in the pandemic, these are some of the uh, technologies to watch out for and to better the attendees' experience. Moving on to our next question, we have limited time. Uh, this is about the key takeaways, the lessons that you've learned from what has happened out of this you know, uh, pandemic across the globe. I'd like you to share your ideas with us. Uh, let me go back to Kuntam in this question. Hmm. Um, well, well, again, I, I would uh, express my, my, my same points though. So uh, for festival owner, uh, the, the key takeaway for, for, for this pandemic is that um, be able to look through the core of, of your festival. Mm. Keep that. Mm. The rest, it, the rest are the possibility that you can change always. Um, um, the format of the format of uh, the festival can change. How audience interact with your festival can be changed. Um, well, it's either a hybrid or, or purely online or like uh, if you if you're doing a, a, a massive uh, kind of concert then. Um, uh, spreading uh, through the neighborhood or city festival that would be one of the formats you can do, but keeping the core of the festival there, right? That, that would be my learning for, from, from this um, pandemic period. Mm -hmm. Kun San, would you like to share? Yeah, I, I agree with Kun, Kun, Kun Tom, yes. Uh, the most important is uh, to, you know, to a target audience. 
And, and, and the key is uh, if uh, you have your target audience, the core of the festival is mean like the content design should be you know, related to target audience that we would like to get uh, uh, them. That's, that, that's it, the, the things. Uh -huh. Ricky? Uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe just echoing what I was saying earlier, I think if you're in the, if the, you're in the event space, I think um, the sooner you can get your staff and yourself up to speed with the technology that's out there um, and, and learn how to use it, learn how to use it well, I think the audience is becoming, you know, in the beginning we're very forgiving um, when there was technical difficulties and that kind of thing. I think that's starting to go away now. I think people are expecting better, um, better virtual experiences and, and all of that. So um, I think move with the times and, and look ahead and, and try to prepare yourself as much as possible for the technology side of, uh, of the events world that we're moving into. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, may, may, uh, so before we move further, may I show you just one minute about the you know, AR and VR? Oh, we have a video. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Video, please. Video, please. Uh, not this one, the, the last one. Okay. All right, we'll check out the video. And of course, the technology used at the Living Art. Yes. I believe that now you have like a very good VR team. Yeah. Yeah. question that we, we can be discussed after the, 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 the session. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we have a little bit of time. I'd like to uh, throw this next question over to Kun Pai. It's a question I have about the music industry. As uh, it was once mentioned that this can be one of the nation's economic drivers as it can be incorporated into the tourism sector. Uh, you mentioned about creating music tourism. So I'd like to know what are the strategies you're looking ahead? Wow, you gave me a really difficult one. <laughs> but yeah, with two, only two and a half minutes. So I'd like to have Tom here help me. Sure, sure. So the thing is, um, Thailand, we um, have the biggest live music industry in Southeast Asia. Um, and then we also have a lot of freedom in expression even though the news might say otherwise. Um, but we do have a lot of musicians, we do have a lot of creativity, and um, there is a lot of interest from, um, from overseas wanting to learn more about our musicians. But the thing is, because of our language barrier, we think that because we sing in Thai, we don't sing in English, we cannot be exported. But there are a lot of of people who are open to listening to music that they don't understand. You can look at K-pop, not many people in the world understand um, you know, Korean, but they do enjoy K-pop, why not? So there's, um, there's a Thai band called Yellowfang. They sing in Thai, but they've been touring all over Southeast Asia. They went to South by Southwest, played um, in Summer Sonic in Japan. They played South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, India. I mean, people are open to, to our music, and I think that Thai musicians need to explore um, you know, the, the venues that they can export their music to. I mean, one of the ways is Bangkok Music City, yeah. uh, obviously, um, which we do bring like, um, international delegates who are music professionals from over the, ro the world. They are festival owners, uh, booking agents, touring agents, mm. whatsoever. Yeah. I can add some, some short comment though. So, uh, well, Bangkok has every factor, I would say, uh, that, um, that attract, uh, attractive to, to the travelers to, 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 to coming in. Well, what left uh, of us that uh, if we want to push the, uh, the travel economy more is the content, mm -hmm. right? So, so they're here for, for food or they're here for, 
for um, well the temple and and they, they they like the vibe of the city already. Right? If you put in well more content that they like into the city, then then it's automatically generating more mm -hmm. uh, um, economy to to the city and to the country. Yeah, we got the musicians, we got the venues. Right. And one mm -hmm. of the people who said it best is the singer of Plastic Section. He said that Bangkok is a beautiful chaos. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful stuff everywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd just like to end this with a question for Kun San Chat and uh, Ricky. If there are any interesting activities coming in the pipeline and if the mice industry can capitalize or connect with your uh, events mm -hmm. brands. Mm. Um, okay, Ricky. Yeah, so um, I mean, from, from our perspective, we are in the process uh, of engaging with a bunch of uh, really great partners and great brands which are creating these uh, really fun, unique uh, events on our platform. Um, so we would love uh, everyone to, to come and check it out. Um, and you can do that by going to sweatedapp.com and, um, and download the app and get fit and healthy. And we've got plenty of, of challenges and events uh, for you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the moment, uh, yes, we still, you know, need engagement. So it's mean like the, if we could not do like physically, we still need, you know, people worldwide can engage to uh, uh, the information that we would like to present. And when we're ready, I mean, uh, Phuket is still world destination. Yes. All right, well, we're running out of time now. So thank you so much for joining us. You've certainly given us the interesting trends, what to look out for, things mm -hmm. to uh, actually think about, and as we hope for the industries uh, to recover uh, post-COVID. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our speakers, Kun Son Chat Grainara, Vice President of TIFA and also CEO and Festival Owner of The Living Art, Kun Pia Pong Mun Prasad D, Associate Director of TIFA and also Co-Founder of Fang Jai, Kun Pong Sri Hetra, Association Director of TIFA and Festival Director of Awakening Bangkok and Ricky uh, Van Rensburg, co-founder of the Sweated application. And that was the trends in the events industry, the first in a series of webinars at the Thailand Mice Virtual Expo. Coming up next, we have another topic that is driving the event and mice industry in Thailand, perspectives and practices, discussed by the Special Events Deputy Director, Business Relations Division of Amway. We have the president of TIFA who will be joining us in the next session and also managing director of WNU Asia Pacific. All right, we'll be right back. So stay with us right here at Thailand Mice Virtual Expo. And from all of us here, goodbye. Sadiq Ha. Sodikrab, good afternoon. If you have just joined us, welcome to Thailand Mice Virtual Expo, organized by TSEP, Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau, under the auspicious of the Royal Thai Government. My name is V of Rin Sachideo. I'll be moderating this session, Mice Industry in Thailand, Perspectives and Practice. But first of all, I'd like to thank our previous session, uh, Kun Hani, Kun Chalapan Sanarula, for moderating the session on the trends in the events industry. And she'll be back at 4 p.m. for the uh, digital uh, economy uh, topic. But our topic for today, uh, for the session, is Mice Industry in Thailand, Perspectives and Practice. The meetings, incentives, conventions, and exhibitions business is an important aspect of the travel and tourism, as we all know, and it's one of its biggest employers and plays a vital role in shoring up the sector during the off-peak periods of the year. It's also a key driver of how tourism infrastructure and resources are developed. The global pandemic has seen a sharply decline in any activity within this sector, and in most markets, with travel restrictions, a complete termination to any live and face-to-face -face events. And with us today are my guests from Mice Industry, who will give us the insight into how the situation has been and what changes they have had to make and the lessons learned to ensure the future will look brighter. Our first guest, Kunjini Techasiriwan, is from the uh, corporate side of the Mice Industry. Ms. Ginny is a Special Events Deputy Director of Amway Thailand Limited. Amway Thailand Limited is an affiliate of Amway Corporation, one of the world's largest multi-level direct selling companies from the USA. And she has a background in hospitality and tourism management, and also extensive knowledge of the meeting industry with more than 20 years of experience. Our next guest, 
From the organizing side, we have Kun Bun Perm in Thanapasad. Mr. Bun Perm, who in addition to being the president of the Thailand International Events and Festivals Trade Association, or TIFA, is also a veteran of the advertising industry and has been organizing events for nearly 15 years. He has brought in several international concerts, entertainment and sporting events, and holds more than 10 licenses for global festivals. And these include the top Thailand or Tour de France, Spartan race and numerous marathons. And last but not least, please welcome Mr. Heiko Stutzinger. He is the managing director of VNU Asia Pacific and managing director of VNU Europe, VIV Worldwide. With 20 plus years of experience, mostly in senior management positions in the trade show business and management consulting, Mr. Heiko is a known expert for the development of the new business areas, strategic growth, as well as restructuring and turnaround management. In February 2019, international event organizer VNU Exhibitions announced his appointment as its new managing director for Southeast Asia. So please welcome all of them uh, to the session. Sorry, Krap, welcome all of you to our discussion. Let me begin with uh, Kunjini from the uh, corporate side. Sorry, Krap Kunjini. Uh, when we hear the term Amway, you know, we, 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 we see large scale uh, events, but perhaps uh, it's, it's more appropriate to, to hear from you what kind of events uh, Amway has been hosting and how is it affecting your business with this pandemic happening uh, from last year? Okay, actually when talking about Amway, people just like um, not quite sure like what type of business. Like they know it's a multi-level marketing, but they didn't know because we're quite close in, in our in our organization. Uh -huh. But now because um, we try to expand our incentive trips, our conference convention to, to a large scale, and then because uh, we try to see that the, the money that we spend, actually it, it, it helps people and it can help them, the countries as well. So the scale that we had so far, if we had face-to-face -face, like uh, two years ago, uh, pre-COVID, um, the biggest one that we had is about 40,000 convention. Wow. And that one is uh, in, in local, domestically. Mm -hmm. But for internationally, um, we, did, um, we did incentive out. Um, the, let's say the biggest one is 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the largest one that we had for the Asia Pacific, 11 countries all together, mm -hmm. uh, we had in Dubai is 10,000 people. So people might not know that uh, what, what type or what, um, what scale that we did, but we, we, we quite do a big scale. Mm -hmm. So you are a great contributor to the mice industry. Right, exactly. Uh, we, we, we're quite a big player in mm -hmm. Mexico, but, but quite close ourselves to, mm -hmm. to, to our, our family. But now I would like to export more mm -hmm. to our people to know mm -hmm. that what, what we um, give back to the, mm -hmm. to the country and to the people as well. We'll come back to that later. But uh, we also have with us, uh, with pleasure, uh, Kun Bun Perm, who is the president of the uh, Thailand International Events and Festivals Trade Association, or TIFA. TIFA was established to support international festival and event owners in Thailand, and its members cover a cross-section of the festival and events industry. We have a short video presentation to acquaint ourselves with TIFA. Let's take a look. So now that's the uh, brief introduction of TIFA. So let's hear more from Kun Bun Perm. What kind of events uh, your, your members uh, host or you yourself have been organizing events as well? Perhaps you can tell us more a bit about uh, the kind of events uh, TIFA holds. All right. So the Krap, Kun Bun Krap. Uh, actually, our association is like graph for all the festival owners. Actually, like the event it kind of subset of the uh, festival. Mm. So the festival owner, owner is mean in Thailand is like uh, in 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 last ten years just just booming up about the festival, but actually we we never know each other. Mm. 
So since the situation of the, the COVID, the pandemic, so we, because of that, that we're working with the international audience. But by the way, after that, that we, we cannot make anything up after that. Right after, right after the, the, the COVID happened from the first start from the, uh, the, the last year, early of the last year, uh, then till now, and we expect that we cannot do anything till end of this year or maybe going, going to 2023, uh, something like that. So it means, this is, this is, this is that what that our festival owner that, that thinking something and we get together and we come together and we, we try to help how, how to do it, how to, how to, how to bring it, the know-how, how, how to bring the uh, knowledge that we have all together and come together and help the government to do something. Mm. So this is the thing that, that we, we're talking about the festival, about the come to be the, uh, we, can, we can help them to create the new legacy, new legacy for, for the, the, the local uh, city. So it means the legacy like, the, uh, like, for example, like the economic impact, social impact, and or environment, that this is something that our the member of festival that come together. We have the, the members like from the music festival. Uh, we from, uh, uh, some of the group from the art and culture, mm -hmm. and some of the, from the map participation sport, like marathon, like the trail, like the cycling. Some of them come from the, the digital industry. And the rest like come from like the lifestyle and fashion or any art living something. So, so this is the thing that, that it very, how to call it, it very uh, unique time that, that we, we, we never have experience come to get together like this. Yeah. But I have to say thankful to the DCEP that uh, uh, try to get, uh, get us together and, 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 and make it together. So this is, this is the thing that, that we come together. So I'm gonna show some slide that this is the, 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 our vision of the association that I said that our association is, uh, that I just started uh, last five months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, it's very new. Mm -hmm. So is it, but by the way, we, we have the vision together. We try to bring in, create the great experience together and, and you know, try to create a new legacy for our country. Mm -hmm. So the key to success, very simple, and we, um, um, I, my, uh, in the position of the president of the association, I would like to say to all of the city in Thailand, in seven, 70, 77 uh, province or city in Thailand, if you would like to come to ACA to help, just let up your right hand and come together, together with us. Mm. So we could have the festival design, mm. and the, our designer and our festival owner, and we can help you to work together. Mm -hmm. and if you have the, you, you know yourself, at, you have like the city DNA, after you, you do the feasibility study, then after that, you, you can work with us, okay? Mm -hmm. Then this is the, the point of the, the uh, something that, that, uh, that if you're ready, you, have, you, have to, you must have a four key points. Uh, this is the strategy of, uh, strategy of the city right now. Mm -hmm. And number one, it's like you, yeah, of course, it's safety right now. Uh, we're talking about the safety and hygiene management for your city. And number two, yeah, some of city, at all the time, they, 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 they just open for the, the, the tourism all the time, mm. and they're never friendly. Right now, you have to think about the affordable. Mm. So the affordable, it comes to be the, another keyword that you have to think of yourself if you're ready. The number three about convenience, that of course, the convenience right now, it's not convenient much. Even like, you know, the air fly, you know, the, air, even the local transportation, blah, blah, blah. But actually, you have the digital and, you know, you, know, you have media right now. Mm. And number four, connectivity, that mm -hmm. all the time, that if you have four key points on this in ready to go, we jump on board, then you, uh, we, 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 we can come and get, get you together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. it for us. Yeah, that's for now, yep. We'll come back to uh, the key success to all these up and coming festivals and events in the future uh, with Kun Bun Perm, but let, yeah. let's hear now from uh, Mr. Heiko. When I first saw the name, I thought you were Japanese, Kunhai. Yeah, where's the Japanese guy, right? <laughs> is, is that a Japanese name or? No, it's, it's actually a German name, but it is. I, I get that a lot in Thailand. The Grab drivers <laughs> always like, huh? 
Where's the Japanese guy? <laughs> no, it's me, Heiko. Heiko. But you're not Japanese. <laughs> no. That's a German word. It's a German name. Yeah. comes from Henry. Ah. Yeah, so I don't know. A derivative. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. New knowledge for me as well. So VNU Asia Pacific, what, right. what kind of events, uh, international exhibitions or, or, or uh, the business get-together, the forums that you're best known for? Yes. So uh, VNU Exhibitions is a, a trade show organizer. So we organize exhibitions uh, mostly B2B mm. in Southeast Asia from our hub in Bangkok. We have here uh, roughly uh, 20 brands we are organizing, in, uh, also in Vietnam, in Indonesia, uh, in Thailand. Uh, our top brands are mostly dominated by agri-food. Mm -hmm. So agri-food value chain, uh, very, I would say the signature brand we have is VIV mm. uh, or VIV. Uh, where we have 13 events globally. It's a platform for the livestock industry, so animal protein production, so to say. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of an awkward word. Um, but also we do here in Bangkok life science, uh, medtech, laboratory, mm. uh, as well as companion pets. Mm. And we have a new format coming up in the topic of uh, ICT, 5G, mm. uh, etc. So um, not really a typically so broad spectrum, mm. um, but uh, already uh, more, more specialized in, in really B2B marketplaces. Mm -hmm. mm. And all the rising stars of the uh, industries in Asia Pacific region as well, I believe. The industry that you focus on, right? Yeah, we, exactly, exactly. Mm. And we have in the, in the drawer some, some uh, very interesting concepts that mm -hmm. we want to launch. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's of course a little difficult. Mm. So uh, we're still launching, um, mm -hmm. but uh, a little, I would say, um, in a little different gear than mm. we would normally do mm. when there is not that uh, mm. uh, obstacle pandemic around. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How do you exactly deal with that, uh, Heiko? Because you know, when you talk about exhibitions, you know, I, I, can, I can picture uh, people you know, meeting. Uh, there, there must be some, some physical uh, you know, uh, presence you know, when you deal, when you close the deal. You know. Absolutely, and, and we have talked uh, to that, uh, over that topic before. So mainly I would say there is, uh, um, there is international events and, and national driven events. Mm. So for our national driven events, for example, Thailand Lab, uh, roughly 90% uh, of the visitors are from Thailand. Mm -hmm. So that is the show, uh, a show we could do last year. Mm. And uh, sadly, it is the only show we could do mm. because our other titles are mainly um, staging an international platform. So we are really very proud. Uh, it, it, before the pandemic, it has been a huge asset to say our titles are international. But now um, it's, it's shifting more when you want to bring people together in pandemic times with no clear open border travel regulations, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. uh, as in no quarantine or 24 hours of quarantine, mm -hmm. um, we, we cannot do it mm -hmm. uh, physically. But mm -hmm. what we do is, of course, as uh, TSET is doing here so wonderfully, uh, we try to bring it on stage virtually. Mm -hmm. um, we do webinars, we do digital formats, and uh, uh, that is definitely an interesting field. It goes well for some of the markets, other markets, for example, agriculture. Mm. We are not so sure if this is really the platform to bring the farmer onto a virtual platform. Mm. So this is something we are currently investigating, experimenting with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's definitely a challenge, that mm -hmm. I can say. <laughs> of course, of yeah. course, it has been, yeah. yeah. Kun Bun Perm Krab, uh, yeah. I yes. saw safety was one of the, uh, the first uh, criteria yeah. when you look at the CDDNA right. and designing the festival. But yeah. uh, you know, even during the pandemic, you have successfully uh, held the, uh, the, the midnight marathon, for example. So how, how, did you or? Yeah, actually, like, uh, we, we quite lucky mm. that the, our government like, just like unlocked down, mm. unlocked down to us. And, and we are the first of the group uh, of the country in the world mm. that maybe the, like, the, the first country like, 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 like that we can do the, the marathon. Mm. So because of the, we just follow the rules and regulations mm. that the government that provide to us like safety and hygiene management. Mm. Just very simple. Mm. Because of all the runners and all the participants, they have discipline already. Mm. Because of the learn from the early of the year, mm. uh, like about uh, seven, six months, you know, uh, six, seven months, eight months that, that, that they learn a lot. Then after that, when we launch about uh, the, the marathon that mm. we have it, mm. 
they're just like, you know, they're, they're easy to, they're, they're ready to jump and, mm. and, mm. and they say that, okay, this is easy to follow your rules and regulation mm. because of all the, anything like, you know, like the, the, uh, the alcohol gels or any screen or any application about Thai China and blah, blah, blah. That the government just provide rules and regulation, we just follow that. Mm. That's it. Mm. And all the discipline up there mm. because of they have the, the team we call the, the regulator mm -hmm. that they follow us. And the, uh, after that, we just ask them, this is, the, this is the, the pass or not, because of approve or not. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, is that good? Because of nobody like, you know, uh, just have the, the COVID-19 virus follow them to the house. Mm -hmm. So this is fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that, that we believe that uh, we learn about this mm -hmm. and we just follow the thing that that, that the world or the, of the, uh, the, the COVID-19 mm. that, that you yeah, teach us about this. So this is, this is something that our industry about the map participation learn about this too. Mm -hmm. So be confident that we can do it mm. from now on. Mm. That, then I, I don't want to like, you know, okay, uh, let everyone care about this, but we, you, you just have masks and mm. clean, wash your hands mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. out and mm. okay, just, aware yourself and follow the rules, something like high, uh, safety and hygiene, that's it. Mm -hmm. This is something very simple. That's just one of the case studies uh, of, the, of the, the running event uh, yeah. that you talk about following the hygiene yes. and all the regulations. But what about other uh, events that, that we see mass gathering, you know, people congregate in the, the close quarters, you know, what kind of change you have to put into uh, you know, practice you know, when, when, when you're planning uh, your future events? Yeah, I think very simple. We we talking about uh, okay gathering against about distancing. Mm. That's it. When we talk about distancing, of course about uh, this is one meter or two meter or whatever. Mm. This is very simple. When when I'm just like have chance to discuss with our members mm. of the they they they're doing about the mu music festival. Mm. Of course, mm. some it, they have discipline. Some it, they have no discipline. Mm. But of course the people uh, the the organizer that have the discipline we're going to have advantage for sure. Mm -hmm. Because of this is something that we can show up the quality of the event that mm -hmm. we can do. Mm -hmm. So at least we, 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 we don't need to think about the, uh, the, the same as the normal situation. Mm -hmm. One fourth of the audience is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And you keep it, okay, shorter and, and, and less than the number that, that you, you did in the past. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I think this is the thing that that, that we found out among our, our mm. members that, mm. that we learn together and we help each other. We don't want to create any mm. problem from our, our, our festival. So mm. this, is, this is the thing that we, we're starting from. Mm. So, so this is, we, we agree together mm. that mm. we're going to go this way. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back to Kunjini, you know, as, a, as a corporate, you know, you're planning your future events, uh, even during the pandemic, it's not over yet. Uh, so what kind of a... Uh, concerns or, or criteria you have to uh, you know take into consideration you know because you also have to be very concerned not to put your stakeholders uh, you know right, uh, in right. danger or, or expose them to to yeah. risk of being infected or you know so okay. so how do you how do you plan events at the moment okay as we discussed um before the the, the session um for me uh personally i'm very optimistic at the beginning, I thought it's just like it's gonna end that like Q3 last year, uh -huh. and it should be gone <laughs> because it's, it's like one of the flu. And then after that, it's like oh my god, this it's is too far. To it's here. <laughs> so, but but we have to work. We have to do something. We mm. cannot just sit still. Yeah. Exactly. And because um because my company, my organization, need motivation. Mm. So at that time, we we know that we have to do something. So we said, okay, we're gonna go digital. Mm. And then, uh, at digital at that time for us for our company, it's just like early stage. Mm. But it seems like it, it's forced you to change abruptly mm -hmm. and then people might not have that um, uh, psychologically to, mm -hmm. to change that mm -hmm. but we have to so we mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. and then it 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 quite a success mm -hmm. we have because people cannot go anywhere mm -hmm. but they need to interact with with friends with people but but so we use zoom as a platform mm -hmm. then but we know that they cannot this cannot uh, this cannot a base because human being need uh, interaction mm -hmm. so okay so we just go from digital and then when um, the government eased up a bit because of, of our COVID it seems like fade away a bit so we said okay we're going to go hybrid mm -hmm. because we, we we cannot just like 
uh, jeopardize their life as well. Mm -hmm. No matter we very optimistic about that, so hybrid is like balancing mm -hmm. the number of people in the big convention. Mm. So let's say it is kind of work, but then because of second wave comes, so mm -hmm. we're gonna go back to digital. Mm -hmm. But I uh, truly trust that we have to go back to face to face. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Because our industry mm. need to be interactive. Mm. I mean, mm. uh, we cannot just like go by digital all the time. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's kind of mixing why mm. between um, face to face and digital. Mm. And then you always have two group of people. One group very scared of COVID, mm. and one group is no, I don't. Um, we're not scared. <laughs> it's just like one of the flu. So you have to balance mm. up the healthcare. Mm. But then um, last year we had a, a panel mm. with um, with the uh, corporate travel world. Mm -hmm. Doctor uh, Ben uh, Benson Tang of uh, corporate travel advisory mm -hmm. mentioned that actually COVID just come and it will go, mm. and then another disease come. Mm. But at least you have to take care of yourself. Mm. You, you you're part of that responsibility as well. Not just like put to other people's shoulder, not just to government, mm. not just to other. You, mm. you have to, to control, I mean, like, let's say, just to make yourself safe, mm -hmm. so you will not be um, a problem with others too. Mm. So we work together. Mm. So not just like wait for, wait for government to, mm. uh, you have to be disciplined. Mm. You, you have to be disciplined yourself. Mm. So it, it's gonna help and then hope that when times come, so everything's gonna come back. Mm -hmm. it, it will not be like pre-COVID, mm -hmm. but, but it, it will be better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. we learn at right, least. Yeah. Right. So you talk about uh, your staff needs to be motivated. So, uh, so has the, the business uh, you know, at large been affected uh, at all you know, by this lack of motivation you know, because of no events or um, no gathering happening? Um, actually for last year, um, I don't want to be that, that is very, we want to be very humble, but let's say I'll be very lucky because our sale last year is go up. Mm -hmm. But but, it's, but we said we're gonna affect it by this anyway because we we up to people to consumers because mm. when you don't have when other people don't have work, mm. so you don't have money to spend. Mm. We will be affected soon. It's not like in um in during that um Tom Yam Kung crisis anymore because mm. that affect other. Not not the whole whole world, mm. but this time it's different. So um, we said um, at least we have to to help people as well. Mm. So we have to work hard, mm. try to motivate people. Mm. Um, this is like challenge of our parents' generation mm. or maybe grandparents' generation. Mm. It's like um, World War One and World War Two, and this is another one. So mm. we have to we have to go through it. Mm -hmm. So we will go together. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, be more collaboration on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So digital was the uh, innovation on the Amway part. You know, they moved to uh, digital and then hybrid and now back to digital and hopefully uh, soon will be some physical uh, exactly. <laughs> touch uh, back to uh, uh, the, uh, into the picture. What about uh, VNU? Any innovations or any advances that you have made so far in terms of uh, you know, producing uh, events or exhibitions that, that will stay? even post-COVID? Yeah, I mean, innovation is, is this word, yeah? I, I mean, I would say uh, trade show organizers globally, not only VNU, but we are now more embracing digital technologies than we have, we have been doing before. Mm. Uh, I must also say self-critically, self-reflective for the whole industry in exhibitions. We have not really embraced digital technologies as we should have because our core business model mm -hmm organizing a show in a venue. So you see there on a photo, this is by the way, VIV, very nice mm -hmm. show, I love it. Um, shows like this were just so successful. So we have been really sloppy doing our homework and the technology was there. Mm. So I would not say it's uh, that we are innovating, but I would say we are looking at innovative technology in a different way, so we are adapting. Um, adapting it uh, more rigorous and giving ourselves a more rigorous digital agenda, meaning um, we have our live events at, at the core because I believe face-to-face, -face, especially for industrial goods mm -hmm. where you have a, a, a high price and it's, it's a complicated product, you, you need to meet face-to-face -face in order to build the trust mm -hmm. in the buying process. Mm -hmm. So that's why you want to meet on site mm -hmm. uh, at the event. However, there is the digital component that is helping the exhibitors and also visitors um, facilitating and also bringing visitors who cannot come to Bangkok for whatever reason, mm -hmm. be it a pandemic or mm -hmm. be it just a missed flight, 
um, uh, to the show, mm. so they can at least have some interaction. Mm. So you can do community building um, by the people who are not coming. You can enhance your customers, exhibitors' uh, return on investment. Mm. Um, uh, as I said, community building, learning, as we are doing here today. Um, you have a, a learning, a webinar session, and you cleverly combine it, and then you have your 365 days mm. uh, technology in order to mirror what you are doing with the physical shows. Mm. These are all things um, that are not new, it's not really innovative mm. per se, mm. but now we are doing it mm. um, because we need to. And, mm. and as I said, some of the shows, the titles are really uh, more digital native than others. They are really uh, embracing it and, mm. it and it works. Mm. And for others, um, we are not so sure mm. if this is really like a, a game changer, mm. uh, as so, I mentioned. Yeah. So, so, so what will stay, I mean, post-COVID, even, even though, you know, things are back to normal, uh, yeah. what, what, what kind of uh, uh, innovations or, or, or enhancement of the industry that, that you foresee it will stay? Um, definitely what I think what will stay, and, and, and this is an innovation far from digital, is what you also mentioned, the safety security aspect. So I think uh, we're going to see that uh, even rapid testing of every visitor. Mm. I'm sure we're going to have that uh, soon. Um, so safety measures, security measures will definitely stay. Mm. I'm a big believer in hybrid events, mm -hmm. meaning you have something physical going on. You also mentioned it, some, some live action, and then you have this virtual digital component on top of it where people can digitally assisted meet and learn and, and match make and uh, inform themselves. So this is definitely what I think will stay. Mm. Um, and uh, what else will stay? Um, yeah, and, and then there's this whole topic. I, I'm not so sure if the panel before was touching on it. I mean, VR. I mean, this is, of course, the next big game changer. Mm -hmm. um, and VR, not like this pixely, Minecraft type graphics, but really when, when VR gets, gets real, um, that is of course a thing um, mm. that is already knocking at our door, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the organizer perspective where we definitely yeah. need to yeah. dive into and mm. see what, what that can do with our mm. business model. I'll give you one more, AR, augmented. <laughs> augmented, <laughs> augmented, exactly. Augmented <laughs> reality, yeah, yeah. Exactly. to add to your list, yeah. So that will definitely come and then also stay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's going to be another challenge <laughs> yes, for yes, us. Yes. You know? okay, well, that um, for Amway, we just add the um, XR, extended okay. reality. Oh, extended yeah. reality. Oh, extended, yes. oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of R's coming. R, yeah, reality <laughs> coming, yeah. yeah. Kun Bin Pum Krap, so uh, back to the festival itself. You yep. know, we, we see the change in uh, you know, people's behavior now because you know, COVID stays longer than yeah, expected. Yeah. So uh, you know, we're sort of like getting used to a uh, yeah. you know, new normal. More, more or less, like it's becoming normal yeah. now, you know, yeah. social distancing and, you know, mask wearing and everything yeah. so yeah. what kind of festival you know will will, will disappear completely and uh, you know or, or will there be any new kind of festival or events happening because of covid uh i think uh from from now on i think from now on like i don't want to call new normal anymore mm. it is normal Right, this is normal. Mm. <laughs> you bring your mask all the time. Yeah. You bring all your alcohol. Like, you know, this is like, I just like still the word from Kun, Kun Heiko, like you said about the, the big change, mm. something big change. Mm. So this is, this is something the big change is like, yeah, of course. It's for us, it's like the our industry, it affects a lot. Yeah. So we have to change. Mm. Like I just like give you example, like case study of like, this is like, uh, like the biggest entertainment, another biggest in the entertainment company in the world, like Cirque du Soleil, mm. that I work with. Mm. So it's kind of like they just totally gone mm. they, because of they cannot adjust themselves. Mm. That's it. Mm. Anyone like uh, cannot adjust themselves, mm. then totally gone. Mm. That's it. Mm. For sport event. Like you see, like now, like the sport event, like English Premier League, Bund mm -hmm. uh, Bundesliga, mm -hmm. and La Liga, Spain, or blah blah blah. They they never gone, but they can adjust mm -hmm. themselves. So whoever they can adjust themselves, mm -hmm. then that's fine mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Then I'm for for us. I just talk to the member all the time. Mm -hmm. They ask me, okay, Bob, you have any loose regulation, new rule regulation from the government? No. Mm -hmm. Because of right now, this is the rules, the regulation. Mm, mm. So this is the normal rules. Mm. So I'm thinking the same as Kunjini. They said, I'm always optimistic. Mm. 
if if you up think about optimizing, then then we can go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you know you stuck in <laughs> your brand and your house all the time, and how we gonna go? And we stuck on this, and you know the the any creativity mm -hmm. in our brand it cannot come out. Yeah, it stop ourselves. So this is. Uh, for your question, I answer that. This is called, cannot call new normal anymore. Mm -hmm. I cannot call it normal. Yeah. But I change, I change myself and you, you have to change yourself too. So everyone has to change. So mm -hmm. we have to accept each other. Mm -hmm. So one day going to come back, maybe another impact. Mm. So now we ready to go. Mm. Any impact. I would like to, <laughs> I would like to fail. Right now I would like to, yeah. to, to, to meet them. Yeah, yeah, something so like that. Stay positive in terms yeah. of thinking, not like test positive. No. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, today's also a historical day for Thailand because you know we right. received uh, you know uh, two slots uh, of vaccines, uh, you know uh, Sinovac and AstraZeneca. So uh, <laughs> maybe your thoughts a bit on the on the vaccination inoculation. You know how will this change uh, the the outlook of the mice industry? Perhaps, uh, yeah, Kunjini. Uh, for us, it's, it's will change because it is will help uh, psychologically and oh. perspective as well. Mm. Because um, because people think that this is a vaccine is like savior. Mm -hmm. It can help and it and, and we can go back to the pre-COVID and things like that. Mm. But but it, it takes time mm. because um, you cannot just have one for one person and then everything's like go back like quickly. Mm. It, it, it let's see it's like how it is gonna work. Mm -hmm. And because it's not just us that we're gonna have them. That we have vaccine because the whole world have to have have it as well, exactly. so we can travel back and forth together. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Any thoughts, Mr. Heiko? Yeah, I mean, vaccine is is integral to to fight COVID. I I also believe it. When when you think about yourself, whether a vaccine or not, statistically, you either vaccine or you get COVID. Yeah, this is mm. this is how it is. Mm. So. Um, but I think a second strategy, very important, very vital, and I think now the first studies are coming out, answering this question, can someone who is vaccinated still give the virus to someone else, even they don't really break out? Mm. So it seems that at least the, uh, one of the vaccines I see um, also contains the, mm. the, the spread. So that is then uh, something that I think is uh, vital for, for every government, mm -hmm. but especially now we are in Thailand, so for Thai government to look at this whole topic about vaccination passports, so someone who is successfully vaccinated two times or three times, however necessary, mm -hmm. get some kind of document, mm -hmm. does a COVID test 70 hours before flight, COVID test 24 hours, COVID test on mm -hmm. arrival, mm -hmm. and then can can walk safely uh, mm. or let's say without quarantine mm. within Thailand. Mm. Mm. That would be the absolute game changer for our industry mm. um, because I believe that business travelers with quarantine is not really working unless you have a multi-billion dollar project <laughs> and they need your signature. Okay, yeah. what are two weeks quarantine when you have multi-billion dollar to yeah. gain? It's like a but vacation. How, how, or, or you are a, a, a gifted uh, high net worth individual that can make three months vacation. <laughs> then hey, easy. You go Banyan tree, Phuket, two weeks. Okay, piece of cake. Yeah. But for all the, 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 the visitors yeah. at our events, yeah. normally they spend yeah. two, three days. Yeah. Yeah. Quarantine is, 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 mm. is just a, put a stop to it. Mm. So mm. that is my perspective on the vaccines. Mm. Uh, rapid vaccination, super important. Mm -hmm. um, and then very important, early on discuss this question, will we let them in when they are vaccined? Mm. Make a pilot project, yeah, yeah, yeah. for example, Phuket, yeah, mm, open the yeah. island first of July. See what's happening. Vaccinate yeah, yeah. the people there, mm. and then and then do it as a test lab. Right. Yeah. Right. It it sounds cruel, but I, yeah, it's it's right. a test lab. It, it shouldn't sound okay. cruel, but yeah. I think book at people they but they want the business desperately yeah, yeah, yeah. because mm. they live from tourism so course, so yeah. i can yeah, so yeah, sympathize yeah. with them because mm. we are basically in the same boat mm. right yeah we yeah. are the events of organizers course. yes yeah. of course yeah, yeah. yeah. any yeah. thoughts could be about the vaccination yeah vaccination i think that's, that's okay that yeah i'm just like you know i'm thinking about like uh uh to say to our members and our you know our friends and our partners that, okay, uh, no need to wait. Mm. Anything like, like a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Just look back at the, like in the past, like more than 15 years about the HIV. Mm. Till now, like 
no vaccine. Mm -hmm. So they, but we still, you know, learning how to stay with them, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's mean like, so vaccination is like, yeah, good for the positive like psychology for, mm -hmm. for people, mm -hmm. but actually like now we have to, to how to survive mm -hmm. for our industry. Mm -hmm. But I think let's, let's do the plan. Mm -hmm. How how to do the your your good canvas? Mm. How to, how to do that good? So mm -hmm. it means like vaccination. Does it good? Mm. By the way, mm. like okay, if you have it, come come fast, come quick mm -hmm. to Thailand, mm -hmm. and then okay, you just go ahead to do that. Mm -hmm. But how to do it? Like 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 seven to eighty million people in mm -hmm. Thailand right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Then when is it? We can finish. Yeah. Uh, maybe the another impact coming. Mm. So again, for for yeah. me, like the vaccination is good, mm -hmm. but we. Cannot wait. Mm. Yeah. Cannot so, wait. in closing, I'd like to uh, ask every one of you to uh, say a few words of encouragement. Uh, you know, I, I want to see light at the end of the tunnel. So, uh, start from Kunjini. Um, Are we hopeful of the future? Very hopeful mm -hmm. because um, it's like every every hardship, every incident um, before in the past in the in history, we we will we will shall go through this together. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, like, you know, uh, I'm thinking like that I said all the time in, in this state, like I just uh, like, you know, give uh, everyone to, to, to wake up and think about the creativity in your head and go ahead and, you know, moving forward about this and no need to look, look back. So it's mean like, you know, now we have to go ahead to move forward to, to, to in the future. Yeah. Mr. Heiko. Yeah, moving forward is nice. Uh, also from our side, uh, despite the circumstances, we are still working on new projects. Mm -hmm. We are still launching mm -hmm. and then uh, we change the perspective because the Thai local market is, is also uh, super attractive. It does not always need to be that lighthouse uh, where you say a whole Southeast Asia is now coming. No, it's okay to have a, uh, and then it's a smaller scale, mm. of course, mm -hmm. um, and then you have it more localized. So these are topics we are looking at. Mm -hmm. So um, to, together with the speakers, I can also say mm. uh, there's definitely uh, always a way to, to make your business. And if you don't adapt, yeah. then you are out market. This is also evolution, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Darwin's uh, <laughs> survival of the fittest. <laughs> exactly. So we need to be fit to the situation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your contribution. My distinguished guests for this session, Mice Industry in Thailand, Practices, Perspectives and Practice. Our next session will be by Kun Chalavan Sahanarula. She'll, she'll be moderating the uh, topic, the webinar on digital technology. So stick around and thank you so much for watching this session. You've been a wonderful audience. Swadi Krap.